Welcome to the Brio in the Box podcast. Episode one is brought to you by our very own line, Brio Plus, of custom formulated supplements. Today we're featuring our natural whey protein powder in salted caramel flavor. Um, this is one we use almost every day in our house. We make protein pancakes for our kids uh, almost every morning. It's a good way to get them to eat some protein and some eggs. First thing in the morning, um, we had each of these formulas custom done, uh, small batch crafted with nothing but the best ingredients, the things we feed to our family, and we're happy to share it with you and yours as well. Awesome. So I guess we'll start out our first episode talking a little bit about the history of Brio, and that starts with you and I. <laughs> and we met in Calgary in 2007. 2007. Oh, man. On. Are we going to tell that? Lava life. Yes. <laughs> uh internet There's, dating before that was cool there was hot singles in my area <laughs> one just one, one. yeah there's uh, a lot of duds so yeah we met on the internet yeah i had just moved to calgary from halifax i just finished university and took a job there i didn't really know a lot of people in calgary and i was just like threw myself out there to meet some new people yeah um came across you yeah i was running a restaurant at the time and only knew the people that worked for me and that was not a good scene. So again, trying to meet new people and see what was out there. Mm -hmm. And then I remember talking for a little while on, what was that app thing called? Uh, uh, MSN Messenger. MSN Messenger. It yes. was before apps. This was this <laughs> like was on, a, the on the computer. You had to type to each other. And then I remember going on our first date. And when you walked out of your condo, I was like, Oh, thank God. <laughs> because I was happy with how you looked and there had been a lot of bad ones out there. So <laughs> it was refreshing. And then we were basically inseparable after that. Yeah, like pretty much we have not been apart for more than a few days. Yeah. Um, our first date stretched into um, a snowboard trip the next day. Yeah. You picked me up the next morning. We hit the mountains. You moved in with me two months later. Yes, out of necessity. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, <laughs> we didn't mean to rush into it like that. But. Circumstances dictated. You moved in with me two months later. Yeah. We were engaged less than a year yeah. after we met and we got married. When you know, you know. When you know, you know. Yeah. yeah. And we're like never apart. Yeah. And so, so far it's worked out pretty good. 2008. Yeah. So this would be like about a year after we met. You had a bad day at work. Yeah. I had a bad day at work. Those were frequent. <laughs> <laughs> Stressful times. Um, you were running a restaurant. Yep. I worked in the finance industry, yep. um, came home and what happened? I was like, I'm just going to see what I need to do to become a personal trainer. Cause we were working with a personal trainer at the time. Cause you were into bodybuilding and he was a bodybuilding trainer. And I remember that was the first time I ever worked with somebody as a professional. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. And I was like, this is an awesome job. I, I want to do it too. And so I was like, I'm going to look into it and see. And then we came across CanFit Pro. Yeah, that's right. And I don't even know if that's still a thing. Is that still a thing? I don't, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was our first little like weekend course and we went, Yeah. let's sign up for this thing. Uh, I, at the time was in the gym like three times a day. Like I would oh, go yeah. before work, I would go to the Y on my lunch break and I, we would hit the gym together after yeah. work. So it was like all I was doing, I was not loving sitting at a desk all the time. We would go to the gym in the evenings and work out together. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time working out with you, you made me do legs and I was a <laughs> no leg day kind of guy, <laughs> curls and bench all the time, but no leg day. And you could squat more than I could. And I was like, well, <laughs> this isn't going to work. So I had to work on that. Yeah. Still work in progress. Wow. Well, yeah. You can, you can squat more than me now. Yes. We tested yesterday. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, a little now. bit. A more. little bit. We're a good. little bit more. So what would that have been? May of 2008. Yeah. We both quit our jobs. Yeah. We decided to move back to Saskatoon. Yeah. Um, originally the plan was we had been part of like an investment group that bought the, a property in Saskatoon. It's actually where Value Village is now in Stonebridge. Yeah. And our plan was to develop a health and wealth um, facility, regular gym on the bottom, and then three floors of office space on the top. So we yeah. had this kind of plan. Then that was... Um, 2008. 2008, which was when the whole like credit crunch financial markets yeah, collapsed. Everything, fell everything apart. went to shit. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, watch the big short. It yeah. pretty much explains what happened there. Um, so we ended up not being able to get the financing we needed to do this big project. And we ended up just selling the land, which yeah. worked out fine. Um, 
And while that was going on, we were training at the field house. We were just bringing clients in mm-hmm. and just doing personal training in the field house. And kind of all over, right? People's houses yeah. and Saskatoon Club. We were just sort of like yeah. bouncing around doing just personal training. And then end of 2008, it was November, we were like, we need our own space. So yeah. we leased this little spot on Central Avenue. Um, it was right behind Robin's Donuts. Super convenient <laughs> Super for conven- a personal training studio. Yeah. Right behind Robin's Donuts, right next to a butcher shop, right down from Quiznos in this little strip mall. Yeah. Um, and so we opened it as a personal training studio. That was what we were doing at the time. We just needed a place to bring all of our clients. Yeah. And it sort of took on a life of its own from there. You yeah. and I found CrossFit. Yeah. Um, in a muscle and fitness magazine. Yeah. The hardest workout ever or something like that was the name yeah. of the ad. Yeah. And it was the Filthy 50, I think they were talking about. Yeah, it was an article about the Filthy 50. It was called The Hardest Workout in the World. And we uh, were super cocky and we're like, oh, we're fit. I was like running half marathons and doing yoga all the time and into bodybuilding. I was like, oh, the hardest workout in the world, like bring it. So we kind of crafted our own version. And it was, we were still (laughs) doing body parts. So it was just (laughs) like. 50 reps of like 10 different leg movements. Yeah. It was stupid. So we looked at CrossFit.com. We kind of crafted our own first workout. I still have it written on a little sheet of paper. Yeah. It was kind of a mashup of Murph and the Filthy 50. It was this horribly programmed, big, long thing. So many reps. Yeah. Um, And we just got annihilated, basically. I mean, I'll speak for myself. I just got crushed. I remember doing (laughs) the first. We we were doing the runs on treadmills because we were in a health club. Yeah. And I remember the first run I could do that without stopping. And I had to stop like 10 times on that second run because my legs were just done. Like yep. I had nothing left. And it took like over an hour, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. It was a ridiculous it was a really first long, workout. silly workout. Yeah. Um, and so then we just kind of went like, holy shit, like we thought we were fit and we are clearly not. Like yep. there's something to this. So we started following CrossFit.com workouts, just you and I. This was like before there was CrossFit affiliates yep. um, in Calgary or Saskatoon or anything. So it was just you and I goofing around with these workouts. We used to post our times on the comment section on the old CrossFit.com and you would see like kind of the 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 OG players. I remember like Chris Spieler and all those guys back then. There wasn't a lot of girls. Um, I had the privilege of starting CrossFit at a time when there wasn't a lot of people doing it and there was a lot of girls doing it and no one was very good at CrossFit yet. So I always just thought I was awesome at it. I was like, oh, I can deadlift 185 pounds. I'm the strongest girl that ever lived, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had no clue. Um, I could also deadlift 185 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it never even occurred to me that a girl could deadlift 300 pounds until I saw someone do it years later. And I was like, oh, I was like, well, if she can do that, I could probably do that. Like yeah. it, it opened my eyes to a whole new world yeah. of possibility of, of like the upper end of you know, forging elite fitness, that kind yeah. of thing. So September of 2008, for your birthday, actually, I got you our level one. We went oh, yeah. to a level one yeah. in uh, Calgary yeah. at a CrossFit gym that doesn't exist anymore. It's it was called, called like True, True CrossFit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I actually just looked up the photo from our level one and spotted all kinds of familiar faces, lots of people that are still around. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there was, we had Pat Sherwood was our flow Pat master, yeah. um, Curtis Bowler, John Gilson, Rob Wolf. I remember them, they had this big tractor tire there and Curtis Bowler thought for sure he could overhead squat it. Yep. And so four of them lifted it up overhead and held it while he got under it and then tried to overhead squat this like 300 pound (laughs) tire. Fucking tire. (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember if he did it or not. I don't, I don't He got down, but it like, it just kept falling. Like he just couldn't find, he like, he had the strength for it. He just couldn't Couldn't find the stability. And I remember watching this being like, what is happening right now? Like, <laughs> this guy's going to die. But that was just how it was. It was like, what can I do? It was cool. So then that takes us to like 2009. So we've got our own spot. This little strip mall. Our gym yeah. was like a thousand square feet. And we were next door. On one side was a butcher shop and the other side was an accountant. So yeah. you can imagine how much that guy hated us listening to CrossFit. Remember they used thing. to bang on the walls when we'd have the music oh, loud. And yeah. yeah, they hated us. They hated us. We got many course. phone calls from our tenant from or landlord. landlord. Yeah, it wasn't good. Yeah. So we we were just doing personal training. We yeah. were goofing around with CrossFit ourselves, having fun with it. Started to implement some of the workouts with our personal training clients. We found that they were all of a sudden having more fun and getting fitter. Yeah. Um, we found that they were not having as many injuries from like doing their own yard work, like from mm-hmm. lifting the wheelbarrow in the yard. People were just like stronger and fitter for more real life tasks. Yeah. And then we just had people start to approach us like, 
personal training is expensive. And they were like, can I split the cost between me and my friend? And we were like, nah, sure. And then they're like, what about a group of three of us? Or what about a group of five of us? And yeah. so we just started putting group times on our schedule that people could come in and, and train in a less expensive way, kind of split the cost of having the personal trainer. Yeah. And then we found in groups that people worked harder, and yeah. way had more, more like had way more fun, kind of. Yeah. We stumbled upon the magic of CrossFit, which is the community. Yeah. Um, and it worked out because shortly around then, Atlas was going to be coming. You mm -hmm. were pregnant. And we knew that you weren't going to be able to work. And we were both working from 6 in the morning until, you know, 8 at night yeah, with a little break, a bit of a break in the afternoon. So yeah. we ended up having to put everybody into pairs or groups or whatever. Yeah. So, so 2010, th yeah. we had Atlas, yeah. our first son. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I ended up having a C-section, so then I was off work for a little while, and that's when we like forced all of our personal training clients yeah. to join groups because we were like, well, David can't do all of these appointments himself, so we just have to go to all groups now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there was a few people that were a little reluctant, a little hesitant, mm -hmm. but once they got into the group thing, they with that final little push, yeah. like, okay, hey, you guys, you have to. Um, it, it went, it went from, fun. it went from, I don't know if I want to work out with other people to that somebody would show up and they'd be the only one and be like, oh, I don't get to work out with anybody, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. It always makes me laugh now to this day if it ever ends up that there's a class of just one person, which almost never happens. But people are like, I don't want you to just look at me the whole time I work out. And I'm like, excuse me, people used to pay a lot of money for yeah. the privilege of having my undivided yeah. attention. Like, But now people are so used to to the group aspect and the, the yeah. value of the community that they're like, oh, I don't want to be by myself. <laughs> yeah. So we were in. OK, so Atlas was born in June of 2010. Yeah. September at the end of he was born at the end of June so like not even two months later or two and a half months later yeah you broke your leg I was in a CrossFit competition yeah it was an obstacle course and one of the obstacles was you had to throw a I think it was a 70 pound sandbag over a barricade and then crawl under the barricade and there was like five or six of them lined up and they didn't stagger them and so I was crawling under the barricade and standing up right as the guy behind me was tossing his sandbag and the sandbag hit my leg and broke my fibula. And so I had to go to the hospital. And I remember watching this it was in a park. I remember watching from like across the field. I saw you go down and I was like, oh, shit. And so I have like this tiny baby with me go over there and like dead pan. You were like, I think I broke my leg. Yeah. You're like, I heard it snap. And you're not normally like a dramatic person about injuries like that. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Here we go. And so there was, you know, the judges and kind of the event organizers and everyone was just like standing there frozen with you on the ground. Yeah. And I was like, somebody needs to call an ambulance. There wasn't a much of an emergency plan. <laughs> There's no plan. And one girl pulls out her cell phone and just handed it to me. And I was like, okay, fine. I will call an ambulance then. <laughs> and so the ambulance came. They gave you morphine, took you to the hospital. At first it, they were like, do you want anything for the pain? And I was like, honestly, like, it's not really that painful anymore and they're like well like it's kind of included in the fee and I was like <laughs> all right let's try some morphine cool <laughs> so then you felt fine I for the rest great. of the day yeah. until it very relaxed um they didn't actually think it was broken at first until they they got the x-rays from all angles because yeah. the fibula broke inward towards the tibia so it wasn't sticking out yeah um so anyway so we have this tiny we have this two-month-old baby and you were laid up bed rest for yeah, like three weeks almost a month well when i when i broke it they were like you could probably walk on it like you're fine but the problem was is for whatever reason my calf muscles just shut off and so my blood circulation just wasn't happening so i'd stand up and my foot would just start to pool blood and it, that was like excruciating and so i had to just be in a bed laying with my foot up for like a month so not working mm -hmm. newborn baby <laughs> So I went back to work full time. The good thing was, sooner than was I, I had a sweet new video game though. And I remember just killing it. <laughs> just like 10 hours a day <laughs> while you were working. So I would leave both of them in the bed, David and <laughs> tiny baby Atlas and like a little fridge of food and milk and bottles beside yeah. them. And I would like pop home in between classes and like check on them and make sure everything was okay. It actually was probably fine that Atlas was so tiny because yeah. he wasn't. He wasn't busy. If he would have been a toddler, it would have been like a totally different scene. Yeah, he um, would he would be asleep and I'd be playing my video game. He'd start to wake up and I'd be like, oh no, 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 go back to sleep. <laughs> right in the good part, go back to sleep. I'm pretty sure I have a picture of you with a pillow across your lap with Atlas on top of it and you with your arms resting on baby <laughs> Atlas playing video games. Priorities. Priorities. So 
Yeah, that was a wild time, but we yeah. got through it. it was you fun. know, at the time, you just you get through whatever, and yeah. you look back and you go, "Oh, that was wild." Yeah. So yeah, we were in this little space on Central. Things were going great. Things were going great. Everything. This was like when CrossFit was just really taking off and becoming more of a mainstream thing. We would have people come in and walk into the building and be like, "What is CrossFit? Yeah, what are you guys?" Yeah, and we would explain it to them. And I remember we had to, every time we did a different type of workout, we had to rearrange all the stuff in the gym Mm -hmm. because we just didn't have any space. We had like a 1,500 square foot facility and I think 400 of that was bathrooms and office. So we Mm -hmm. were in a small little space. So eight people was like the maximum we could have. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where all of our workouts were just full. Yeah. We were like, it's time to expand. Before Rogue. Yeah. Our first pull-up rig, we had it like custom done by this welder that like, Smoked too much pot. Nothing really lined <laughs> up. Like nothing, it was all like yeah. rattly. It took nothing. them like three times, three attempts to drill each hole. Yeah, it was so, pretty rickety. I remember having to order our first pair of rings, gymnastics rings, like from Denmark, because yeah. there was like no company that made gymnastics rings. It was such a specialty thing back then. Um, so yeah, we like made a lot of our original equipment. Yeah. We used. We had like a back alley that was paved. We used a lot of outside space. Yeah. Um, our four hundred meter run used to go around (laughs) so you would smell Quiznos on the corner you would smell Robin's donuts when you came around the front and then you would smell sometimes rotting animal carcasses in the dumpster from the butcher shop as you came around the back so it was uh, was quite the luxury running loop so we pretty clearly had outgrown that space the The accountants were ready to kill us yeah the accountants were understandably ready to kill us yeah so we were looking around for a different space to move for a long time. Yeah. We were there until the middle of 2012. So three and a half years, we toughed it out in that little tiny space before we finally found the our current building yeah. where we are now. Um, yeah. Jessup Avenue, our yeah. little spot. We bought that building. Um, the realtor we were working with earned his money. He basically, after a few uh, deals fell through in that same area, he just said, drive around, make a list of the buildings that you're interested in, and I'll start knocking on doors. And yeah. so he literally did. He walked into... It was called Pause a While Pet Hotel and talked the owners into retiring and selling <laughs> us the building. <laughs> At gunpoint. <laughs> no, they were going to in a year or two anyway. They were thinking about it and, and yeah, so uh, yeah. He, he hustled and earned his bucks definitely for that deal and found yeah. us our, our forever home, which yeah. is where we are now. Yeah. And it's been a little over nine years that we've been there. In that building. Yeah. That's crazy. Time and flies. we have rearranged and renovated that building every approximately 147 yeah, times every six or so months we rearrange <laughs> something every long weekend for every long like weekend notorious people are like what's going to be different on tuesday yeah um so yeah we've, we've been through lots of different phases yeah so that's the history of brio where we started where we came from yeah it's been 13 years wild ride fun times yeah no two years have been the same no one of our biggest things has always been like grow with the times, you know, every year is going to be different than the last and, and try to keep doing what's working and, you know, stop doing what's not working. So it's been an adventure. Yeah. All right. Thanks for tuning in.